I won't give in, I won't give in till I'm victorious. And I will defend, I will defend, and I'll do all I must. Well, I will give in, I will give in, I'm so glorious. I'm back, I'm back. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we had the return of Robert Roode. And I'm not going to lie, I was very excited to see him back. Kind of knew it was him after they did the whole thing with Dolph Ziggler. But yeah, if you saw Raw, Drew McIntyre was doing this open challenge to anybody he hasn't faced. And I think people got the wrong idea. I think they more meant for the WWE Championship. But Robert Roode came back. He's uh, curled his hair back a bit. You know, he's curled his hair back a bit. He's got a bit of gel. He's got a bit of gel in his hair. And all that, you know what I'm saying? And he's still with Dolph, Dolph Ziggler, because Dolph Ziggler, you know, kind of you know, gave him that opportunity. Great match. It was a great match between those two as well. But, uh, yeah, I can definitely see why a lot of people might have thought it was a bit underwhelming. But, you know, it did what it did. Seeing Drew and, uh, Ro Dr Drew and Rude have another match since NXT TakeOver... I can't remember what number. I can't remember what number. But I do remember it was one of the TakeOvers when uh, Adam Cole and the Undisputed Era debuted. That's all I remember. But anyway... I haven't done that in a while. <laughs> I haven't done that in a while where I do the raw, the, the, the Barbie Rude entrance. Uh, it, it's a shame because I really like... Like, I'm, I'm a huge Robert Roode fan. I'm a huge fan of him. It's a real shame that WWE hasn't really done anything, you know, great with him, you know, for the longest time. Like, like to me, it's, it's just... It's just I, 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 I like the guy so much, and it's a shame that WWE just haven't done anything, you know, important with him for me to do it. Like, I love doing it. Like, I did it in the NXT reviews... I did it when he won the U.S. title. I just hope they. I just hope WWE can do more with uh, Mr. Rude. But we'll get. But we'll get into that. We'll get more deeper into that later on. So we began the show with Drew McIntyre with the Legends, and um, yeah, Drew was a bit upset with the Legends uh, interrupting, ruining his title match with, with an interference. Well, that's funny, Drew, because you kept ruining Keith Lee's matches. You didn't... So, so I guess Turnabout's fair, fair play. So, I guess Turnabout is fair play, Mr. Drew, because here's the thing, Drew. You kept interfering in Keith Lee's matches when Keith Lee was versing Randy Orton. And now people interfere in your match and then you say, Oh, I didn't appreciate you guys, you know, coming out. I could... I, I, I can do this on my own. Then maybe you shouldn't interfere in other people's matches, Mr. Drew. But I digress. In my personal opinion, Drew didn't really beat Randy fairly because he, he had help. Now, what Sami Zayn did is completely different to what happened with the Legends. The Legends were assisting Drew in the win. Sure, it was no DQ. But still, they were assisting him. So, big major difference there. And uh, Randy Orton vowed that he'd get another title shot. He vowed that he'd get another title shot because he is Randy freaking Orton, and I agree he, he will get another title shot whether people like it or not. First matchup we had was Zelina Vega taking on Oscar in a Clash of Champions rematch another pretty fun match between Zelina Vega and Oscar like I really do enjoy their matches and, and, and uh, I will let you guys know this right now, like for those who are wondering when I'm going to do my little draft predictions video I will definitely be doing that very soon I'll be possibly making I'll probably do the video on might do it tomorrow or on or might do it tomorrow or on Thursday I'll think about it though I'll think about it though 
Anyway, uh, Oscar got the win, and that seems to be it because we're thinking that maybe we're going to see Oscar's next opponent, but nope, seems like she is done with Zelina Vega. So after the match, we saw Andrade come to the ring and he starts berating Zelina Vega. Starts berating her, calling her weak, called Angel Garza weak, that they were holding him back. Andrade. Mr. Andrade. It's the other way around. Zelina Vega saved your career in NXT. What were you doing in NXT before Zelina Vega came, came and assist you? You were wearing a silly hat. You were dancing. You were smiling. Zelina Vega was the reason you became NXT champion. Zelina Vega was the reason you became United States champion. So in my opinion, Andrade is a complete and utter idiot. I know we've been wa I know I've been wanting them to split up for a while, but you're just gonna have Andrade just straight up say what's not true? Does this mean Zelina Vega goes to SmackDown? Or do they turn her babyface? Or do they turn her baby face because she feels offended that Andrade backstabbed her? I guess we'll have to wait and see. But Andrade took on Keith Lee. And Keith Lee got the win. Fun match. But nothing exciting. Then we had more 24-7 nonsense. Kira Tozawa won the title. Then Drew Gulak won the title. And then it went back to r -Drew. Who cares? Honestly, who the hell cares? If you still enjoy this 24-7 nonsense, then I... I honestly can't help you. I honestly can't. So here comes the... Uh, I guess you could call this the most interesting thing on Raw. Like, I know a lot of people might be getting bored of this storyline, but this story was kind of the talking point of uh, Monday Night Raw. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, Jerry Lawler had uh, King's Court. He uh, called out the Mysterio family to the ring to, to discuss what happened last week. And uh, we heard Aaliyah speak for the first time. Not too awful. But you got to remember, she's only 19. So then Seth, Seth appears on the screen. And he shows Buddy Murphy's phone. And inside his phone he had DMs. He had, he had some messages uh, to Aaliyah. And it was Aaliyah and Murphy having a conversation. And this led to Aaliyah kind of trying to tell Ray and Dominic that Murphy is not like Seth. Now, I want to get this off my chest real quick. Aaliyah, on September 7th, on September 7th, this month, Aaliyah attacked... Murphy with a kendo stick and here she is on the, on the September 28th American 29th for us Australians she's telling Ray and Dominic Murphy's not a bad bad person well if Murphy was never a bad person then why were you hitting him with, with kendo sticks on September 7th
To me, it's... To me, it's very... Weird. To me, it's very weird that she would say that when we saw her beat the crap out of Murphy a few weeks ago. Along with Dominic and Ray. The entire Mysterio family were beating the hell out of, out of Murphy on that episode. But, any, but it just doesn't make sense. What else didn't make sense was Dominic Mysterio being a complete and utter idiot. Now some of you may think, well he's just defending his, his sister. He's, just, he's trying to fight and protect his sister. That's all well and good, but Aaliyah told Ray and Dominic that Murphy is not like Seth. And then Murphy was very angry with Seth. Now we see Murphy now now from the camera angle we see Dominic attacked Murphy straight in the face. Right in the middle where like you could clearly see Do like Dom from that camera angle, Dominic could clearly see Murphy like this to Seth. You know, he he was grabbing Seth like this. From the angle we saw. Dominic cl clearly could have seen Murphy cl clutching Seth like this, not very happy with him. But no, Dominic attacks Murphy. For what reason exactly? I don't freaking know. And I was just thinking to myself, why are you attacking him for? He did nothing wrong. Which led to a match between the two of them later on. It just didn't make any sense to me. It really didn't. Seth was laughing at Murphy when he when he took his phone wait, wait, because Murphy was grabbed him like this and, and Seth was laughing. Found it funny, I guess. So then we had... So then we had Lana and Natalia having a whinge. About how the women's tag team title should should be theirs, which I personally disagree. And then Lana says possibly one of the most biggest bullshit thing I have ever heard in my entire life. She said that those women's tag team titles exist because of her and Natalia. Let me say that again. Lana said the women's tag team titles exist because of her and Natalia. CJ Lana Perry. I know you're a heel, but even you are that delusional. The women's tag team titles exist because of two people. And it ain't you and Natalia. It is because of Sasha Banks and Bailey. Those are the two people responsible for that title's existence. How dare you make a mockery out of the women's tag team titles by saying you and Natalia are the reasons for those titles' existence. I never saw you on Twitter clamoring for the women's tag team titles. I believe at that time you were on vacation with Rusev. I believe you and Rusev were off TV during that period. Stupid, ridiculous idiot. What a, what a blivering buffoon. Natalia and Lana make one thing that I can agree with. They say the tag team champions should be stripped of their titles. I agree. I can agree with Lana on this occasion. But no, Mr. Adam Pearce, Mr. Boldhead, Mr. We Better Stop Retribution, he comes walking out. He comes walking out. And he tells Natalia and Lana they he cannot strip Shayna and Nia of the tag team titles. Of course you can! Of course you can strip them! What excuse do they have? What excuse do Shayna and Nia have to keep the titles? If they can't compete
me, they should be stripped. They, they, and, and he said that Rice Squad will get their match when Shayna and Nia are ready. What if Shayna and Nia are never ready? What if they stay off TV for the next five years? What if they stay off TV for the next five years and they never show up again? What if they never return to television? What are you going to do then? Bullshit. They should be stripped. I don't care what anybody says. They should be stripped. I don't care if you're a Shayna fan. I don't care if you're a Nia fan. They should be stripped. I said the exact same thing about Andrade. When he was the United States Champion. I said the exact same thing about him this year when he was taken off TV due to drug issues. I said the exact same thing. He was taken off TV due to injuries and, and, and bloody drug issues. And they never took the title off him. And I still said the same thing about him. Shayna and I should be stripped. No matter what! I don't care what excuse they have. Oh, we can't compete. Yeah, why can't you compete, huh? Why can't you compete? Bullshit. Absolute bullshit. These two are the definition of what ruins tag team wrestling. These two are the definition of what ruins the women's tag team championships. These two are the definition... Of why those women's tag team championships mean absolutely nothing. Sasha and Bailey made those titles. They made those titles important this year. And you give it to two of the most pathetic people on this godforsaken roster. I said this at my Clash of Champions. I said this on my Clash of Champions review. Sh Liv and Ruby should be champions by forfeit. Absolute disgrace. Absolute disgrace you are, Adam Pierce. And who the hell are you to make the rules anyway? You're not the general manager. Stupid. But then he tells Lana and Natalia that you guys will have a match tonight. And it was against Mandy Rose and Dana Brooke. Listen, you've got a draft coming up. Why are you moving people? Why? Why are you moving Dana Brooke to Monday Night Raw? She was doing fine on SmackDown. More importantly, like, I like this pairing, don't get me wrong. I think Mandy and Dana... Are actually a solid pairing. I think they're a pretty decent pairing. I like the pairing. But you gotta understand, why are you moving her? Why? Couldn't you just wait it until October 9th to announce heading to Monday Night Raw, Dana Brooke? No, you couldn't wait. You had to do it now. Friggin' Monday Night Raw has 18 women. I actually checked it up. They have 18 women on their roster. Well, SmackDown is left with 8. SmackDown better get people like Charlotte. Like, I think SmackDown should have Charlotte. I know they won't get Becky, but I think it'd be pretty cool if SmackDown's roster was Charlotte, Becky, Oscar, Io, and Bianca Belair. Adding those women to SmackDown's roster would easily destroy anything Raw has. But of course, that would be too... Well, obviously, that would be too much for for SmackDown. So I think they should... I, I, I think Charlotte would be just fine. And Bianca Belair. Billy Kay, Peyton Royce, Liv Morgan. Done. Those are the women that SmackDown should get in return for all the, for all the people that you keep taking. And yes, you can send Andrade to SmackDown as well, you know, so he can be with Charlotte. Absolute disgrace, I swear. But I will say, 
Dana and Mandy are a pretty good pairing. And they got the win. Mandy Rose did the jumping knee to get uh, the pinfall victory on Lana. I don't care. Well, I do care, but I just didn't care about the match. Kevin Owens and Alistair Black had a match. It was actually a pretty good match. Alistair Black's got new music. I don't mind it. I, I don't think it's all that bad. It's actually pretty good, I'm not going to lie. And uh, Kevin Owens won by disqualification because Alistair elbowed the uh, referee. So that feud's continuing. More 24-7 championship nonsense. Don't care, I'm just going to I'm just gonna skip it. Because you guys probably know who won. Then we had Dominic face Murphy in a match that made no sense. Because Murphy did nothing wrong. But Aaliyah came out. And uh, she was telling Dominic to stop and leave him alone. But he was yelling at her, which led to Murphy getting a pinfall win. Holy cow, Murphy actually winning a goddamn match on Monday Night Raw. Never thought I'd see the day. He actually won a match on Raw for once. But Aaliyah continues to tell Dominic that Murphy is not like Seth, and he continues to yell at her. And... Calls her naive, which leads to Aaliyah slapping him and walking away. Mustafa Ali made his return to Raw. And uh, he teamed up with Apollo and Ricochet to face the Hurt Business, and the Hurt Business lost. Big surprise. That's a big surprise right there, since the Hurt Business is, uh, you know, since they always bloody win all the damn time. Definitely was a surprise to see them lose for a change. Have Ali face Bobby Lashley for the United States Championship. Or just put Ali and Ricochet together as a tag team. I'd be fine with that as well. Then I guess uh then I guess and then I guess the next time then I guess that means one of them would turn heel. <laughs> And then we had Drew McIntyre face Robert Roode in an open challenge. Like I said, it was great to see Robert Roode back. It was a great match. Drew McIntyre won with the Claymore. I was thinking I had a bit more to say about this, but I guess I really didn't. But, uh, but yeah, that's really all that happened there. And then the last thing that happened was uh, Randy Orton... You know, he, he, he seemed like he walked away. He left the arena, but he came back. Turned out the lights. Oh, turned out turned off the lights as he beat up all the legends. That's really all that happened there. And I've got to say, the legends are terrible actors. If, if you're going to have someone come into your locker room, turn off your light and beat you up with a chair... Make noise. Because all you could hear was banging. That's all you could hear. All you could hear was banging. No noise from either one of them. It was just banging. If you're going to convince us that Randy beat the hell out of him, at least make noise. But either way, that's the end of, that's the end of this review. I hope you guys enjoyed. And, uh... I'll see you all next time. Hit that thumbs up. Comment your opinions down below. See you next time.